Hey, Jaden. <laughs> Sorry. This is Jaden. She's an animator, and until recently she didn't show her face on the internet. In her face reveal video she explained why in a freaking powerful animation. There's a main reason, and I haven't told this story to anyone. My standards slowly started getting higher and higher without me realizing how bad it was getting. Eventually this branched out to more than just what I was doing. It started seeping into my self-image. Eventually I decided I would go the entire day eating as close to nothing as possible, then eating a bunch at the end to stop the pain followed by erasing it. This whole awful cycle went on for several months. This isn't as simple as just getting thinner. There's so much more to it. She struggled with anorexia and bulimia, both eating disorders, and that video really hit me for two reasons. Firstly, because I know eating disorders are the most deadly mental disorders in the world, and secondly, because I personally have been really close to people who have struggled with this stuff. Now growing up, when I was really struggling with things, I would often turn to music as a kind of coping mechanism. So I DM'd Jaden and asked her if she wanted to make a song together on this issue, where the lyrics are influenced by someone who has actually gone through this experience. And she was like, oh hell yeah, bitch, or something along those lines, I can't, I can't quite remember. And cut to several months later and we finished it, and you can see that here. This video is the story of how we turned her experiences into a song, and also some stupid clips from when we hanging out because Christ this video is gonna need help keeping the mood positive. Yeah. We're headed to super targed. Would you like power waffles or energy waffles? <laughs> We're so, so American. Shark rocket stick vacuum. Five star rated. Holy <laughs> crap. Do you find this offensive, Jaden? All, All this the dairy. Kids yogurt. <laughs> As a vegan, how do you feel? It's brewing. I'm stewing. <laughs> It'll now be you're rapping. <laughs> when I went over to visit her, one thing in her room stood out as particularly weird. My therapist has, uh, we did like this thing. It was like a body dysmorphia exercise. So she gave me yarn and she gave me scissors. And she's like, cut off as much yarn as you think would go around like each body part. Like snip it off at where I think it would like go around perfectly. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and so. That's so freaking cute. <laughs> we're talking about serious stuff. Yeah. And you're like, what you doing? So this is how much I overcompensated. It's like the visual oh, interesting. thing of body of dysmorphia. Much... I cut off this much of like, this is my thigh. Yeah. And then it's actually this much. So I see myself as this and then the rest of the world sees this. How does it feel seeing that like laid out um, like that? It's more real than I thought it would be. My biggest one were my thighs. Yeah, that's insane, the And difference. my stomach. And then I just laid it out here like a weird art project. <laughs> so the first thing we had to do was come up with the lyrics because we didn't want to just unintelligibly mumble through the song. That would never work with rap. We actually did a lot of the ideas over Skype before I went to visit her, and I recorded that, but I lost the footage because I'm an idiot. So I sat down with her later to talk about it instead. How have you felt doing this whole thing? It's like, weird, but like a good weird, because it's fun, but it's also about a serious topic, but we're having fun while doing it, yeah, yeah. so it's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be enjoying myself. I wondered like, how it would feel going through this kind of, like, reliving it. It's not really reliving it, it's more looking back on what I felt like during it. How was your mind back then? Like if you had to describe it. Was it was a lot more toxic than I thought it was. Like during it you can't really see what's like, like you're in the problem and then people around can see it. This is gonna sound really sad. To push hunger away or like just ignore it, I would have gum and that's a, uh, a, a big thing in eating disorders is gum and mints yeah. and stuff. There was four calories in a stick of gum and that was too much for me so I'd rip it in half oh and have half a piece of gum. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, like your but brain that's is- how obsessed. That's how obsessive and toxic your brain is during that, like every little number counts. There were a lot of intense parts to her story, but that one hit me like a truck. So I wrote down the things Jaden told me about her experiences and turned them into potential lyrics. Then Jaden picked the parts that really hit home. Are there any lines in the song that hit you? Mm, definitely the thing where it's like, you have to trust your body. Like that's, you keep telling that to yourself, but it's so hard to just trust in something you you're, you've been scared of for so long. Why were you scared of it? It just rewires your brain to be scared of everything that's natural yeah. and stuff. So you just have to trust your body that it knows what it's doing. It doesn't have like a secret agenda to gain weight 
unlimited, yeah. like unlimited, you know? So I made the instrumental, came back, and then it was time to record the vocals. And we didn't want to be cramped in a cupboard for several days recording these together. So we opted to record them in Jaden's room. However, this meant that we had a co-producer in there with us. Ari, you want to say something? This is Ari. We figured keeping Ari in there with us would make this video a bit funnier, which, which is true. But it was also bloody annoying. Feels good how do I put this at <laughs> statistics, but the voice is with me too thick and thin. Stop. Alright. On a few of the earlier takes, Jaden's vocals started out quite quiet. And at first it was working, but then things were emerging. First it was working, but then <laughs> You okay? I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I made a friend. And at first it was working, but then things were emerging. I think we've got I the keep tone. doing like this thing with my hand. <laughs> it helps, doesn't it? Like the weird rapper hands thing. Yeah, you can tell I get why. it now. And at first it was working, but then at first it was kind of working, but uh, the... <laughs> after a while she started to get a little more power in her voice. It's breath. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, that's metal. <laughs> that's the direction to take this song. <laughs> I wasn't expecting death metal to come out of this face. That kind of screamy intensity actually worked really well for some parts of the song. They tended to be the most difficult parts, however. Oh, this is the one. I developed a taste for this and you're the never-ending ache convince. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's gonna be tricky. You'll be fine. I don't <laughs> I've developed a taste for this and you're the never-ending ache convince. I've developed a taste for this. I've developed a taste for this and you're the never-ending ache convince. That was really good, I like it. Convince myself I'm in control and it's not all the voice that makes me sick. Six. <laughs> it's not all the voice that makes me sick. That was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> ick. Ick. Ew, ick. ick. <laughs> do, do you need a moment? I don't think I've ever said ick in my life. <laughs> so by the end of day one, we'd finished the first verse. Bye bye for day one. Yay, day one! Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> like You've got to look out now, this is not fair. <laughs> On to day two! Yay! <laughs> Yay! For day two, the plan was to record the second verse about how the disorder started to become an addiction. This ordeal is becoming a routine. Check arms, back, neck. Yeah, that's it. The whole idea is so weird. Of body checking? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, just making sure that everything is going to plan. <laughs> Did you do that before you saw it on, on Tumblr and stuff? Yeah, definitely. I never looked at blogs or anything. Where did you read about it online? Um, I don't know. Like, I've always known about, like, throwing up and anorexia and stuff. I think since I wasn't educated on how serious it was when I got into it, that's what started. When you start out, you're like, oh, it's not that bad, or like, I can control it. It's I can stop whenever I want to. But obviously, you can't after a certain amount of time. When I was going over this video with Jaden, she thought it was important for me to clarify that it's not all about the weight thing. A big part of it for her and for a lot of people is feeling in control. When your emotions and your life feel out of control and you can't handle it, it feels good to be in control of something. It's like a safety blanket, if, if a safety blanket had a really high death rate. So we were getting to the parts that were the most emotional and difficult to perform. Uh, you know, the parts where we really wanted to focus with no distractions. Numbers. It all goes... <laughs> Numbers. Ah! <laughs> it comes down to numbers. Ah! Honestly, I was really impressed with Jaden's vocals. Like, no amount of editing can get that kind of emotional tone in your voice. Well, not no amount of editing. It probably saved me a few days. Thanks, Jaden. So ordeal is becoming routine. Check arms, neck, back, fuck. <laughs> routine. Check arms, back, neck, thighs. Suck it in and pinch my sides. I like this. This is coming across intense. The whole thing there has to be in one breath, so you're gonna have to take numbers. a moment. Numbers. Numbers. <gasps> it all comes down to numbers. I know it's wrong, but just because you know you're colorblind doesn't mean you can see the colors. I really like the colors on that one. <laughs> Ari. How are you doing? <laughs> Feels good how I quit this. Uh, <laughs> how I quit? <laughs> how I quit this. But the voice is with me through thick and thin. That was freaking great. <laughs> when that's all put together, that's going to be really nice. How are you feeling about all this? It's 
crazy. I've never considered trying music or like auto tuning or like, yeah, yeah. you know. So, with the vocals done, there was just one thing left for us to do. I think that's everything we need. Really? Yeah. Done? I think we're done. Uh, hell yeah. Now what? Now I'll do my own parts and uh, it's the music video. So for the music video, we decided to record a storyline part. And I wondered how Jaden was going to feel about this since she'd be essentially reenacting the most painful time of her life. It might have helped a bit that we were just messing around a lot and sometimes just being really stupid. See how MTV Chris! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing, Jaden? Howdy. <laughs> Could you jump up? Oh crap, you can just see me there with the camera <laughs> creepy in the background. For the old movie Gone with the Wind, I heard that for the big finale, they set the entire movie set on fire and they had one chance to record that big shot. And we had a moment like that in this, except instead of a movie set, we had a sandwich. And I actually forgot to set my camera to low frame rate so we could do slow motion. So we had to make another sandwich. But look how much more dramatic it is now. Take you want to eat? Bite your tongue. Farewell, normal speed sandwich. Your memory lives on. Then the only thing left was the performance parts, so we went out to buy a smoke machine. Like, ah! Oh crap. That was a good idea. Okay, ready? Okay, go for it. Ah! Oh god. <laughs> it's looking pretty cool. Yeah, I babe. This was a bad idea. <laughs> it's okay. Incidentally, that's not the first time that's happened to me when using a smoke machine in a music video. I had an ex-girlfriend who had this disorder and not just had this disorder. She was so far into it that she ran a pro-anorexia community online where they ignored the science about how deadly it was and encouraged each other to do it. At the time, I had no idea how serious it was and I'd barely even heard of it before. Like, looking back, I wish I'd known how I could have helped her. And when I was writing the song, I wanted a conclusion in there that could have helped her if she'd listened to it. Jaden asked her therapist what she thought the most strong advice would be to someone who is struggling with this stuff, other than getting a therapist. And she suggested talking about the problem with people who do not have that same problem. So that's the message we chose for the bridge of the song. By the way, thanks Jaden for trying out all the stupid ideas I had for the harmonies here. If you ask for help, it doesn't make you weak. I can reach out and come with the voices. <laughs> They didn't quite work out like how I imagined in my head. They're in there. It's really quiet. <laughs> Big range there. It sounds like a rat like climbing into the, <laughs> the room and was like, I want to see you. <laughs> Jaden made this project a lot easier than it could have been. She's comfortable discussing her problems where I know a lot of people struggle with that. And she's really good at coming up with analogies for how it felt. Some of the lines are literally word for word what she described to me in the Skype conversation. Like the line. Just because you know you're colorblind doesn't mean you can see the colors. I heard that and I was just like, that's going in the song. And on a slightly different note, it's really cool to see someone who is a self-proclaimed shy person pushing themselves so far out of their comfort zone. It's kind of secondary that she did a great job. It's just really cool that she gave it a try in the first place. The part of her story that I was perhaps most curious about was how she found her way out of her disorder. How long did it take for you to kind of admit that you were addicted? Mm. I'm not quite sure. I know that I was really not doing good for like a solid three, four months in college. And then after that, I think I was like, okay, I need to stop and I need to, this isn't good. I don't want to keep doing this anymore kind of thing. Yeah. Because it was also like wasting time and I was like not feeling good. <laughs> it's like, I got other stuff to do than like eat and then go throw up and yeah. like, like, it takes a long time. <laughs> That's the reason to quit. <laughs> I was just really tired of it. I've got games to play, man. <laughs> I've got YouTube videos to play. <laughs> I was like, I'm sick of doing this. I'm tired. I'm, I don't feel good ever. I'm not happy. So I was like, okay, it's time to start taking this seriously. I want to not do this. I want to be normal again and not worry about it. And it's like any addiction. You don't suddenly find that one day your cravings have vanished and you're cured. It's a constant process of having to resist it so you don't fall back into it. But it's worth it. Jaden could have been on the wrong side of that statistic, which would have been rubbish. Who would I watch on YouTube if she died? That'd be so annoying. <laughs> I feel pretty bad about that one. Hi Jaden. Um, I just made a really mean joke to you. How can I make up for it? So check out the song if you haven't already and check out her amazing channel. It's, it's the best on YouTube 
it's it's better than everyone else's. She's really cool and better than better than everything I've ever done. Cheers for watching and have a nice day. I'm gay. <laughs>